we can change the secondary from gray to indigo. Uh, yep, look at that. Those are some nice colors, right? Live reload, uh, SAS build pipeline, um, all ready to go. How long did that take? A couple minutes, five minutes? Not a big deal, right? You start off bootstrap the right way. It's actually fun to deal with. Okay, today we're going to do a bootstrap four project from start with a build pipeline and SAS compilation and we're going to set it up right so that we're not committing uh, bootstrap you know compiled files to our repository and we're going to have live reload and all that stuff so start off I'm going to uh, clone my favorite project skeleton you can use whatever you choose I'm just going to make a couple settings to uh, this bootstrap file which has nothing to do with Twitter bootstrap. This is just the way I start this up. And we're going to start with a brand new template, call it TWBS4. Now, if I show you my project skeleton, we have templates and we have web app 01, which is a Twitter bootstrap three um, that comes with the project skeleton. Twitter bootstrap four. And in here, we're going to make a styles directory. So if I reload that, come down here, we have styles. Now, we don't have any Twitter bootstrap files, so uh, we can go to their examples. This is at get bootstrap docs four. And we're just going to we're just going to um, do a simple W get on that. And that's saved as index.html. Now I need to move uh, index to index.html.php for my particular framework. You may not have to do that. And we're going to go in here and we're going to dress this up. So uh, we just pulled this right from their site. And their site is linking to a relative bootstrap.min.css. So <clears throat> use uh, whatever you need to use for your templating system, whether it's Blade or whatever, to um to call a, a local css right we don't have this file yet but this is the css we're going to make under dist css site.css and uh i'm going to try to pull down this holder js because uh that let me get that uh can I w get that? I can. Look at that. So we go to the bottom and let's just say uh, echo mt URL. All right, so now our project should be somewhat functioning. Oh, uh, I did not uh, composer. I didn't composer install, so right now I'm actually going to do composer require Twitter bootstrap 4. And you don't have to do this, you can download the Twitter bootstrap files, but this is going to put it into a directory where uh, it's not in my Git repository, right? My vendor folder is not included in Git. But any old way you want to download Twitter bootstrap 4 and unzip it somewhere uh, is fine. And now we see that we have this. So this is our version of this, and it has absolutely no CSS whatsoever. And if I show you, um, oh, I put my mm, composer stuff in a folder called local. Yours will, yours will probably be in a folder called vendor. And then we have the source for Twitter Bootstrap, and it's under this SCSS. So if we look at this file. This is their main file. And it, it's just a bunch of imports. That's all it is. This is how they structure their, their um, SCSS. Here's a variables file. Uh, this is a file that's included from the main file, and it sets all the colors and um, what's a primary color. You know, the, uh, anything that's uh, info should be cyan. Anything that's a warning should be yellow. And we can make changes to this in our own um, site uh, SCSS file. 
And now we're going to start on the build pipeline. And for that, I am going to use pulp. And pulp is a, a build tool that uh, I wrote. We're going to start with init project. And what this does is it creates a hidden directory, a dot pulp directory. And if we go in there and we look around, we'll see that there's a composer and a config. And the composer lets you specify uh, plugins and dependencies just for your build pipeline. They don't get mixed in with your main project. We all know that Composer slows down when you have way too many things. This also allows you to uh, have like minimum stability dev for, you know, plugins that are highly in flux that you may not want to include in your main project and you don't want to sacrifice whatever um, stability you have for your main project. So if we could, we have to come in here and we say Composer install and this is going to bring in all the plugins just for the build pipeline. And so now we have everything ready to go. And we can look in the config. And the config is what defines your pipeline. Uh, the sample config file is set up for less. So let's translate everything into uh, SCSS. And SCSS. And really what we have right here is we have one watch task and a couple variables that we've pulled out. Now we don't need public and we need to say Twitter bootstrap four and Twitter bootstrap four. And we don't need all directories, just everything under styles. Let's go back up to our main project and we'll go to templates, styles. Oh, we don't have anything there. So let's edit template. We're bootstrap styles. Let's do site.scss. And uh, why am I over there? Okay. A little bit of confusion here. All right. So now I'm in this file and I'm going to say import bootstrap semicolon. We come down here. We go into our project that we just created. This is a separate. Um, Tmux pane down here. So if I type pulp watch, it's going to load up the definition of all the tasks in the config file and run whatever is defined there. Let's just see what happens if I make a change. Okay, we got an error. And why do we get an error? Let's make this a little bit bigger. Oh, import path list. Yeah. So this isn't going to work right away because I haven't told the SAS compiler where to find any of my imports, right? I've just said import and it's saying I don't know where to look. So we'll edit our build pipeline file and we'll come in here and we'll say uh, import path is and uh, TWBS. So for you, this would probably start with vendor, right? I start with local. Bootstrap SCSS. Bam. So let's save that. Let's try this again. And we'll set the watch. Come back here. We'll make a small, small change. And it errors out again. Okay, this is unexpected. So what's going on here? 23 uh, output dir CSS. Am I not? Uh, what's going on here? Argument one, pass the pipe must implement yada yada. No. Oh, aha, I did not catch the live reload in the use. This is you know, it's PHP, you define a, a inline function and you need to uh, tell it all of the scope that, that it needs to run. So uh, we will come back up here, make a small change to our file, and we'll see that we got some output. We reload our page. Uh, we'll see that absolutely nothing has changed. Why is that? So we now have a dist and a 
CSS folder, which was created by the SAS build pipeline. And we have the, the resultant file. So let's check the uh, index file, see if it's loading this correctly. Dist site site.css. Yes, that is true. And so why are we having a problem over here? Why is that saying 404? File not, not, oh, because it's called sites, plural. Um, all right, so I made a plural here. And uh, let's just, um, let's say move templates, PWBS, simple mistake, right? A little plural. Let's just rename this file and close that one and refresh and reload the page and still nothing going on. Why? Because that is still like that. Um, let's restart the build pipeline. Make another change there and reload the page. Aha! Success! We now have built the uh, site CSS and it's included in the template properly. A little mix up with an extra S, not a big deal. Let's get rid of that file. Um, this CSS sites plural. Need that. Refresh. Okay. Uh, we now are properly building, uh, so let's see what we can do. Let's kill that. If you remember before, we come down into our vendor directory, and the Twitter bootstrap file is made from uh, a bunch of includes. And so we can take these variables and make them our own. We come into our own SCS file, put it above the bootstrap, save it, and we should get a clean build and no changes. Now let's say I don't want the primary to be uh, a blue color. Rather than go to every button that's primary, I could just come in here and say, you know what, primary is now purple instead of blue. Come back to my page and refresh, and we have a purple button. Look at that, I didn't change any of the core files. This is my SCSS file, I can version this and, and do whatever. But I had to come back and reload the page. So let's look at why live reload is not working. If we come back here, we see that we are piping to the SCS compiler. We are um, then piping it to the destination directory, which will physically write the file out. And then we're piping it to LR, which is our live reload. So why isn't that working? If we come down here, it says it's working, it's sending live reload, but we haven't actually included the necessary JavaScript live reload. Uh, requires a custom little bit of JavaScript. And I'm looking for my copy and paste example that uh, I seem to have lost, which is cool. Okay, it's right here. So if I come into the bottom of the template, right here where all the other scripts are, uh, let's just say uh, live reload. And this is standard for pretty much any live reload installation. Now I've copied this from some PHP code, so I have too many uh, backslashes. <laughs> and up. Too many backslash escaped single quotes. That should do it. Now, when I reload this page now, we should see some live reload communication happening down, down here. And we do, this is a little bit of a bar dump of what's going back and forth between the live reload process that is the pulp plugin 
and the browser. So hopefully, in theory, if I come down here, let's say we want to change our primary from purple to yellow. Look at that, it's changed. We can change the secondary from gray to indigo. Uh, yep, look at that. Those are some nice colors, right? Live reload, uh, SAS build pipeline, um, all ready to go. How long did that take? A couple minutes, five minutes? Not a big deal, right? You start off bootstrap the right way. It's actually fun to deal with. Now, there are a number of uh, updates we can do. We can make this even better. Ha ha ha, right? I didn't, probably didn't think that was possible. We can make our own um, structure to our SCS. This doesn't have to be one giant file that has just all of our colors in it or anything like that. So let's cut that out. I'm going to save it. We're going to go to templates, Twitter bootstrap styles. We're going to make our own include. As, uh, SAS and SCSS, uh, if you start a file with an underscore, it's treated as like an include. So we're going to say this is my theme.scss. And we're going to paste all this in there. And we're going to come back. We're going to say import my theme. And hopefully, this should give us all of our colors back. And it doesn't. Why? Why doesn't it do it? Well, we come down here and let's look at, um, let's throw a debug into our pipeline. So we can come back here. We can say we want a new pulp debug pipe. Come down here, kill it, restart it. And we make a change. Let's see what's actually happening. Okay, so it's getting, this is the debug line, it's getting the site CSS and it's getting the my theme. Now, we don't want the my theme. It won't properly compile. The my theme is completely dependent on other things. It's not going to result in the file that we want. Right? It's not going to result in a complete CSS file. And what we're doing is we're actually sending that to the browser saying, here's your CSS file. It's just this weird portion of a CSS file, it's blank, because all we're doing is setting variables. Well, here's the problem. We, we want to watch all these directories for any change, right? This is this file, and we want any change to any um, SCSS file, but we don't want to compile every SCSS file. So what we want to do is say um, source file CSS. Ooh. Ooh, again, second time. And then we want to, okay, I need to move this window out of the way. And then we want to capture it and say source file CSS. And we come up here. Source file CSS. We just want to do one file. We just want the site file, not every file to trigger the compilation. We come back here, start it up again, bring our little window back into play. Now we make one change, just new line, save it, and oh, error, lovely. What is going on here? Direct main is not be empty. So did I screw up I'll put dir CSS Aha. Um this is not So I must have misspelled this at some point. It doesn't look like it though. Source file CSS, source file CSS. Oh, haha. -ha. I didn't move the window far enough. I have to capture it up here, right? Too many nested, too many nested problems. Bring this back down. Stop 
the build pipeline started up again because we made changes to it. Come here. Oh, uh, we restarted, but I didn't reconnect the um, live reload, so not going to live reload. And it's probably not going to live. It probably is live reloading, but we've changed everything back. No, this is primary. And secondary, this should definitely be indigo. Perhaps it's not including my theme. Um, it is my theme, SCSS. Aha! The other problem. We have now included a file, but we haven't added it to our import path. So just another quick addition here. So instead of this being one file, we're going to make it an array. And we're going to say, look, the other place to get include files is our own styles folder. Come down here, watch it again. Bring this lovely browser window back into play. And make a quick change and everything should trigger. Look at that. Look at that. Yellow, purple, beautiful colors, right? So we're done. Uh, we can go a step further because, hey, every time I start this, I got to make a stupid line change to see what's going on, right? I just, I don't, I don't want to do that, right? So let's, let's refactor our build pipeline for a second here. Let's get this out of the way. And what we want to do is we basically want to copy this, everything but the last line. We don't want to live reload. We want to copy this and have this start. Uh, whenever we launch the the um, the watch task, right? So compile sass. Let's just refactor this real quick. So we're going to need the pulp object. We're going to need a source. And we're going to need a dest. And we just paste all that in here. Let's return it. Let's finish that. Let's change it to source. And just to test. Now, in here, cut all this out. And we can say pipe equals compile sass. Source file CSS, uh, output dir CSS, and don't forget to pass it the P. And uh, so now we can pipe this. We can pipe our pipe. A live reload. Turn that. So now we're able to take the so the core concept of compiling and watch a set of directories. And every time that set of any one of these files changes in any one of these directories, kick off this compilation process. And we can even go one more and say, let's make another task that's just called SAS. And you know what? Save time. Just going to copy all this. I probably don't need it all. But close that out. And our SAS is just going to do this. But we're not going to live reload, right? We, we, we may just want to call this task from the command line and just say, you know, pulp SAS. And it's going to do the same thing, and it's just going to finish and end. It's not going to live reload. Well, now what we can do is at the top here is we can say, hey, whenever, whenever we start watching, exec the SAS task. So uh, we're not going to get a live reload off this. But it's going to start, it's going to watch, and then it's going to do the SAS, going to debug and complete. And then it's watch. And then my browser is going to reconnect with the uh, web socket. That's what that's what that is down there. But so now we've successfully refactored our build pipeline so that uh, every time I start the watch, I'm going to get a fresh copy of SAS. So I sit down for the day and I pull in everybody's uh, changes. You know, I get fetch and pull and I get all these changes and I start my watch. Hey, I got a fresh compilation of all the changes that everyone else made and I'm watching 
And anytime anybody makes a change to, uh, let's say, the theme, let's not do yellow. Let's, uh, let's see what teal looks like, right? Bam, it just works. And what we have now is we have this build pipeline um, that every time you start the watch, it'll compile the latest changes and then continue to watch files. Uh, let's go a little bit further into SAS and Bootstrap. Forget the build pipeline, it's working for us. It's working well. Um, what we want to do now is talk about BEM or this, this naming convention for CSS. And if you look in here, uh, primary. What we have is this isn't very semantic, right? We have this main call to action button, and it's right here button, button primary, my two, which is some padding. This isn't very semantic. Every time we are making a button, we have to include um, specific bootstrap names. And it would be better if we could just call this button what it is, and let's call it. Uh, album header which is the block that it's in it is a button and which is the element that it's in BEM and the M is the modifier what's the modifier let's just call it uh, main it's our main call to action and then for this one we can do the same thing except we'll call it sec for secondary SEC and this is the benefit in a number of ways I'm not going to get into it but what we're doing is we're not exposing the intricacies of Bootstrap to the outside world. And here's how we deal with that. Let's go to our SCSS. Let's import a file called album. And you can name this anything you want, but we're gonna go like page by page here. And we're gonna say the templates, Twitter, Bootstrap, for styles, album.scss. And in here, we're going to make a class, album header, button, main. And we're going to do one for our secondary as well, sec. Now, if you remember the classes that these were made out of, they were made out of button, button primary, and my two. And this was button, button secondary. In my two. And so in SAS or SCSS, you have this interesting thing where you can do extend. And I'm not sure if you need quotes or not. Or a semicolon. Let's see if you don't need a semicolon. See if this thing errors out or not. This is not working. Uh, do I need semicolons? Maybe I need semicolons. Aha. And did that change? I don't even know if that changed. I think that changed. And now we can, what we can do is we can sort of say, this is maybe not the best example because it has main and secondary and whatnot, but I mean, we can just do, concepts in here um, let's say we included some another JavaScript um, some sort of fancy checkbox that had its own CSS or SCSS style sheets we could say you know mix this in this isn't a mix in but we could say you know this extends all these plus it extends uh, uh, some sort of I check right and and obviously this won't work but this gives us a powerful way to semantically deal with um, our uh, just our site in general if we stop going in to every page and just saying okay this is this has header and bootstrap header and header reverse and header nav we can just say you know what this is my site header bar default and we just we just combine all of our all of our bootstrap things right here. Again, I'm not going to get too much into why this is good or why this, you know, why this is the best. I think it's really good to to start this way and do this stuff. Look it up. It's there's a couple different CSS naming conventions. You could just Google that. One is called BEM, B E M. Just pick one. They're pretty darn good.
So there you go. We got Pulp uh, helping us watch our files, build our SAS. We're starting off with Bootstrap 4. We're starting off the right way where we're just modifying the variables and creating our own semantic names and making those a combination of existing things. It's all good. Uh, leave a comment if you know if you like this uh, pulp build tool. Uh, there's a link below. Go ahead and try it out. Let me know what you think.